What's up? It's Ballistic, Ballistic Beats, BallisticProductions.com. Uh, welcome back to another video about this NPC Live. You might notice it looks a little different from my last one. I did upgrade to the NPC Live 2, and I gotta say, uh, it ain't a huge difference from the Live 1, but this retro look and just the speaker, which I didn't think I like a lot, it actually does add enough to... Um, get a different feel a different vibe from it uh the few extra buttons i didn't think i needed but it helps out time correct especially and some of the others but um this ain't about that this is about sampling so before we do that hit the like button hit the subscribe button and hit the comment section and let me know if this helps you or if you want to see something else if this didn't help if something else you do need help with i'll help you with that so just let me know and we'll make it happen. All right, so again, we're gonna be sampling today. I'm actually gonna sample from uh, my laptop into the NPC. It's in standalone mode right now. Uh, one of the first things you're gonna need to sample from an external source, whether it be uh, some type of turntable, uh, iPad, cell phone, whatever that has a, a headphone jack, basically. Um, I use these Y cables right here. Uh, basically, one end, that's where the Y comes from, has the left and right uh, quarter inch cables right there, the red and white. Uh, the other end has a eighth inch uh, headphone adapter there. So it's one cable, one end goes into your phone, tablet, com other computer, whatever. Other end goes in the NPC. I'm gonna actually put these into the left and the right uh, inputs on the NPC. Just like that. And this will go into my laptop. Boom, that's done. That's all the setup you need. Um, so the first thing I'm actually going to do on the NPC is go into the menu, into sampler, and uh, what you have here is the option to arm the track, and when you arm it, it's going to kind of go into a standby mode and wait for a signal from whatever source you have going into your inputs. So since I have the laptop in there right now, when I hit arm, it's going to be waiting for me to hit play on the laptop. And once the sound goes beyond whatever this threshold right here is, if it's here, the sound's going to have to be loud before it kicks in to record. If it's down here, it's a little bit less. And I like to keep mine somewhere around there because uh, depending on what you're sampling, sometimes it has little clicks and pops and stuff. You don't want that to set off your uh, recording. So... I'll actually go a little lower than that, uh, somewhere around 15, negative 15. I'm gonna hit arm, it's waiting. Um, just for this example, I'm gonna use this Loki track again, uh, the Loki theme song from the Marvel Disney Plus show. Uh, I did actually sample that recently and I'll link that video uh, up here if you wanna uh, check out that beat. I think it came out pretty dope myself, but I'll let y'all be the judge of that. Y'all ain't tell me that started. So, I don't want that. What happened was uh, I hit, rec hit play on there and I didn't hear it, so I didn't know it was recording. And that's because this monitor here, which is what I was actually gonna do before I hit record, if this monitor button, which is what this is, if it says off, then whatever you're recording in, you're not gonna hear it. Uh, if you turn that to in, you're gonna hear what you're sampling in, and that's a good thing, especially if you wanna uh, stop and start in a certain place and if you don't want the whole sample to just play out. Um, Anything else here? think that's cool for here. I'm going to be playing this out of the speaker on the NPC Live 2 since it's just a tutorial. Uh, you'll get the point from that. So let's hit play on the Loki theme from YouTube.
I'll just let the whole thing play out. There we go. All right, so I'm going to name that. I'll just name it Loki Test Toot. And basically what we can do from here, I can hit keep and that will keep the sample and it'll put it into my sample list. So I can go through, make the beat, and when I want to pull the sample in, just go to the list of samples, pull it in from there. Um, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to go straight to edit because we're about to edit it right now. So I'm going to hit edit. It takes me right into sample edit. What that is, though, um, if you're here and you forget how to get to the sample edit, you can uh, hit shift and the mute button. As you see, that has sample edit as a uh, shift function or secondary function. You can also double tap the mute button. Any of these secondary features, you can just double tap and get to, like browse or grid or whatever. So sample edit there. Another way you can just go into the menu and hit sample edit. All those will take you to the same screen. Uh, you will see a green start, a red end point. You can drag these like that you can zoom in just pinch to zoom in if you want to get a more uh, precise edit and same with the end point I can zoom out move that end point another way you can do this uh, if you put the Q link on the first uh, row there you can use this first knob to move quickly to edit that point second one a little bit slower to fine-tune third one micro tune like even more and the same with the end point except you can go to uh the second row here that'll move the end point uh after i think 2.8 this little slide over feature came in uh that is great because it lets you know what you're editing not so great when you're trying to edit the end of a sample because it actually covers up what you're trying to edit so um you can do that manually if that gets in your way uh basically with this say that's a little silence at the end that i want to take off i'll just move that point over some and i want to hit process there's different features or ways that you can do this what we'll want to do is discard and this will you see the trash can uh, on either side anything before the start point or after the end point it'll delete and we'll keep the main meat of the sample there so i'm going to do that so now we got just what I want here. Um, so that's the trimming. Now I can click and go into chop and we can chop this sample in multiple ways. Um, you can do what's called the lazy chop, which is what it's on right now. And that's manual. Basically, as soon as I hit this first pad, it's going to trigger the sample to play all the way out. And I can hit each one of these other pads when it gets to the part that I want to add to that pad. So um guess I'll go ahead and do that first. No, I'm Yeah, let's do that. So that's how you can manually chop something. You also have the option to do threshold. That will try to use the transients, um, like all the hits or the, the peaks of all the sounds, and it'll choose the sample uh, points based off that. Um, that's, I usually would only use that if I'm doing like a sample of a drum loop or something like that where I just want little hits here and there like using for percussion sounds and stuff because it's not really gonna be easy to stay on beat uh, if you use uh, threshold 
regions uh, it chops it into even regions you can do like 16 and that'll automatically split it over even uh, parts for the 16 pads and you can change how many regions you want it to be and they'll all be completely even um, you can go to BPM that chops it to how many bars and beats you want like if you want uh, four bars and like one beat each that'll be 16 bars or you know what I mean <laughs> uh, so if I want to go to one bar four beats that's the same thing go to eight it'll double it I can go to gonna have this whole first bank full and the second bank too because that is 32 uh, so and then you see the C is empty if I go higher than that it'll load those into the C bank too and I can go all the way down in that first one and that's how many samples I'm adding so that's kind of a lot but we'll go to manual and I probably got to undo all of that and I got what I originally did manually by undoing all the way back so after you mess around and you get everything the way you want it there you can hold down the shift button and you'll see convert down here I like to do pad parameters and do it now I can go back to my main screen as you see there is no sample here but if I go to the program and I choose the Loki test there that is the program that was just created I'm gonna hit full level so now it's ready for a beat um, I think that sample was somewhere around like 108 BPM um, before I do that also I'm gonna go into the menu and program edit and if you want to do some more manipulating with the sample and stuff like that this is where you'll do that so in program edit that program selected this here is the zones for uh, what we're going to actually edit I don't want to edit just the sample on that pad or that one it's on current right now so any highlighted pad that's what it's going to edit uh, you can do multiple to affect certain pads and uh, not the others that might be something you want to do at some point but right now I want to do all so I'm going to select all for zones close that out so now if I go here into samples at the bottom I can warp and change the tune and all of that for all the chops uh, so let's say I want to move that up three semitones this is what we got now say I want to go down three semitones and it's this all right that's pretty straightforward you also have res reverse there and that'll reverse each pad individually pretty cool and yeah that's pretty much that uh, when you do that warp and everything though this is kind of the key to having it stay on beat when you actually hit record and want to make your beat you want to set the BPM here in a uh, program edit uh, so you find the BPM you can tap along with your sample I like to use an app on my cell phone this is a metronome app and I can just like play that along with the original song and it'll find the uh, tempo that way 
Or you may get it from Splice or Tracklib or somewhere that just tells you the tempo. But whatever tempo your sample is in Program Edit here, you want to put that in here. And then uh, you can warp everything and you can change your tempo uh, up or down and everything will stay on beat. Uh, so I want to record that in. I just go here. And I should be able to change the tempo and everything warps into place. And that's that's a big deal when you're sampling. And you can go slower. All right, so let's put that somewhere around 130. I'll just for giggles go to track two, go to browser. I'll double tap menu to get to my browser. I'll go to places. MPC Live is my internal SSD. I named it that. Yours might be different. Um, I'm going to go to ballistic sounds, ballistic productions, drum kits, and I have my kit here. I'm working on another one that's like more. Uh, uh, versatile or like hip hop drums and stuff too, which of course these are hip hop drums, but it's based more around like trap. So if you want some dope trap beats, the link is in the description and comment section for this. But first of all, let's go to a new program, an empty program, back to the browser. I want to pick that hi hat, put it on that pad. That's one of my favorite little short open hi hats. So I'll click that and let's get a basic clap. Put that there. Nice fat short kick. Put that there. Uh, eight oh eight. Put that on that pad. I just have like after you make so many beats, you will probably do the same. You'll start putting the pads. You start putting the sounds on the pads that um help you remember what they are. Like I always lay out the same things on the same pad. So no matter which sample is on there, I know that my hi hats here, my opens here, my kick is usually first, and my claps and uh, snares are usually on these. So just the FYI there. Um, let me get these hi hats in. All right, I hit overdub. Now I can go back. Add my uh, open hi hat. Just random freestyling it. Clap. That's that. I want to do my 808. I'm going to hit 16 levels. I don't know if that's tuned or not, but it's just a tutorial, so I ain't gonna spend too much time on it. It sounds good, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna add my kick. That was not a kick. That was still on 16 levels, so that happens a lot. Uh, sometimes you just gotta remember to hit 16 levels to turn that off 
and then you can get your regular drums back. <laughs> Let's go. And yeah, so you can build a beat from there. Um, I actually flipped this sample a lot better than that. <laughs> and again, I'll link that at the top so you can go check out my Loki beat. This ain't about Loki beats. This is about just the sample workflow on the NPC Live 2. That's one of the sampling workflows. I will do more. If there's anything specifically that you want to see, uh, hit me in the comment section and let me know uh, what you have. If I feel like it'll help others, I will make a video on that. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to let this kind of ride out. Wasn't too many mistakes and I don't want to edit too much so you can actually see the workflow from start to finish and not just uh, super chopped up. Um, but anyway, if this helped you out, let me know. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, please, especially if you want to see some more stuff and um, just help me build. Yeah, till next time, hold it down.